Hi, I'm uh, Jennifer Simpson. I'm the Senior Director for Government Affairs here at uh, the American Association of People with Disabilities, AAPD. I work on technology policy initiatives, uh, legislation on the Hill, and um, work with the executive agencies on regulations. Now, I got into uh, the disability world uh, because my son Joshua Chatinas, uh, he's now a young man, age 25. Um, when he was born, he was born with cerebral palsy. And um, when we found out he had cerebral palsy, um, we then found out all the disabilities he's had, and he, ha he has, and he has um, physical disabilities, he has intellectual disabilities, speech disabilities, and he has epilepsy. Uh, he's also a very healthy young man, and um, has a wonderful personality, and uh, we love him dearly. Yes, I was on the uh, lawn of the White House the day it was signed back there in 1990. I saw... Um, President uh, Bush sign it. I saw all the other key people up on the podium. I was there with my son Joshua. Uh, at the time, he was only uh, five years old, uh, and we had um, we had a great seat watching everything that was going on. And it was truly, truly, a momentous occasion to see um, a civil rights act that directly affected my son um, be signed in front of me. It was just. Um, a wonderful feeling to see this happen. Okay, um, since uh, over the 20 years that the ADA has been in effect, um, a lot has changed in many ways. Obviously there's some, some things that haven't changed, but for my son Joshua, uh, it's all about the built environment. It's really improved for him. He is a wheelchair user, and we can go on the buses now, we can get into a lot more stores, uh, we go to a lot more places uh, than we could ever before. Uh, the ramps on the sidewalks, um, you know, restaurants and places, uh, very, um, ADA has really sincerely, you know, impacted uh, a great deal of his ability to go anywhere he wants to go. Um, previously, uh, he really suffered some discrimination. Uh, as a little guy, you know, I tried to get him into a preschool um, for, for kids, and it was a preschool for kids with disabilities, and they wouldn't take him. They wouldn't take him because they said he was too disabled which is really ridiculous. They could not get away with that right now because of the Americans with Disabilities Act. He also was discriminated against a couple of times. Um, the things he wanted to do, like he wanted to go to a fairground once, he wanted to go on the rides. They said, no, nope, it's not safe for you. You can't get on the, the fairground rides. They could not get away with that right now. Um, you know, we also had some attitudes of public transportation. The drivers sometimes refused to lower the ramps on the buses, but nowadays, of course, they do. Uh, I insist on it. And obviously we have the Americans with Disabilities Act to back, back it up. So yeah, there's been quite a few changes. Although the ADA has accomplished a lot, there's still quite a bit that needs to be done, particularly in the area of accessible technologies. I mean, we all know we now live in a broadband world and we live in a wireless world. Now how accessible all the devices are, the products, the services, the applications, um, that's still kind of up in the air who's responsible to make sure they're accessible. And that's one of the things I work on here at the American uh, Association for People with Disabilities, to try and make sure that the new technology, uh, which comes out at a rapid, rapid, blistering speed, whether those things are accessible. So I'm working on the Hill with some legislation, HR 3101, to make sure that happens. And if that gets enacted, and we sure hope it does, uh, I'll be working again with the uh, federal agencies to implement uh, that act. And th this is what I'm looking forward to. Um, because I do think we're at the beginning of a new century where electronic um, communication is going to be really impact our lives in a different way and every person with a disability needs to be able to use it just like everybody else.